Hey, hey, God bless you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in uh, to Bible study. Listen, it's Bible study time. This is a time that we get into the word of God. And so I want to just expand your mind and give you what it is that the Lord uh, has given unto me to give to you. Uh, certainly appreciate you. Listen, do me a favor, share this with at least one person. That's all I want you to do. Share it with at least one person uh, to let them know of something that you have. And so lately I've been like uh, on these thoughts about things that's in your mind. It's all in your mind, things happening in your mind. And so I want to really expand on that a little bit more uh, on, on, on today and we'll get some other things going uh, in our life. And so let's pray real quick. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory, honor, and the praise. You are good to us, and we thank you for it. Bless us. Talk to us. Give us what we need right now. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank God and amen. Uh, and normally, um, when, we're, when we're talking about uh, the mind, we kind of deal with just the things of uh, just a bunch of things happening on our mind. We talk about uh, that mental illness. We talk about the, the factors in mental illness or mental health, those things in there. But I want to deal with something on today. Uh, and I want to title it this, peace will guard your mind. Let's go real quick to Philippians chapter four, uh, verse number seven, Philippians four, verse number seven. Uh, and in Philippians 4, verse number seven, I want to look at it in the New King James Version. It says this, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through uh, Christ Jesus. And so I, I, I've let you know, I want to just deal with and talk about the particular topic of peace will guard your mind. So do me a favor, put that in the comments. If you want to do that, help me out with that. All right. Now, one of the things that I have... Um, I'm learning is that wise people never make important decisions in a wrong emotional state. Uh, I, I, it, this, this month is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we have so many different capacities of things that's happening. People are telling you to exercise. People are telling you to drink water, of course, get you some sleep. Um, but I was looking at that statement of how people are making important decisions, but they're not making them in the wrong emotional state. One of the things, uh, the, one of the great greatest Bible stories that I love is when Elijah uh, was being hunted down by Jezebel. Queen Jezebel was after him and he ran and he was ready to give up his role as a prophet and he was ready to die. Same guy, everybody, same guy that was like in a place of, okay, uh, God, send down fire. You know, I'm standing up for you. I, I'm, I want you to be a consuming fire. I want you to, uh, I'm, gonna pour, I'm gonna pour this water uh, right here on the on the altar. And then God, God's gonna show them that you are God. Now that thing messed me up because I was like, okay, wait a minute. This guy, fresh off of a great victory, uh, being recognized with God, recognized by God and God did something for him same guys running for his life, right? And as he's running for his life, he continues, I mean, continues to just be in a place that he was very sad. He wanted to give up. And so God gave him 40 days. He hit him 40 days of rest, 40 days of prayer, 40 days of recovery. And before he decided what was his next steps, um, he, he was ready and he was uh, in a place of having faith in God, confidence had built up and, and he was not worried about that fear that he had a Jezebel. Now, his decision was very different in the end, of course, uh, than it was. And, and you and I have probably seen people make some terrible decisions in their life when they were tired, when they were drained, when they were discouraged, when they were afraid that they would never have made otherwise. And so in essence, what we're uh, wanting to, to teach tonight and give you as encouragement is that when you have an important decision to make, sometimes the wisest thing that you and I need to do is to wait until you're rested, all right? An anxious mind in an exhausted body can lead to a terrible decision. 
So in verse six, our counterpart, uh, account the verse right above what I just read for you in Philippians chapter, uh, uh, chapter four, verse seven, verse six, it talks about, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in prayer, but, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And then it runs into in the peace of God what surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now notice what happens, what the peace of God will do. What the peace of God does for you and I, it guards your mind. All right. Now, what does it guard your mind from? I'm glad you asked. Listen, it guards your mind from acting in, in uh, impulsively. It guards your mind from acting selfishly. And it, it guards your mind from acting maliciously, acting in any way that will result in loss rather than gain. That is going to be a place where you live in regret. And we don't want to live in regret. We want to live in joy. Listen, that's what I wanted to tell you. I want to encourage you with that, that the peace will guard your mind. If you get that peace, it's going to guard your mind. Listen, I'm going to pray it out. Father, we thank you for peace. Give the person that has listened to this peace right now. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you. In Jesus name, we pray. We say thank God and we say amen. All right. Have yourselves a good one.